worshipers, I said, praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this worship service. We bless your name for bringing us together. Not only to worship, but to see the way to life eternal. We're asking, Lord, every barrier in the way you clear up in Jesus' name. We'll climb every mountain. We'll jump every hurdle. Every enemy that stands in the way will walk over them and still get to heaven. Trials, temptations, tribulation, trouble, whatever, we will conquer in Jesus' name. Our coming to the service today will not be practice and worship as usual. It will be to get the weapon whereby we'll conquer every time in Jesus' name. Because wise unto salvation, wise unto victory, that what we get here in the service during the week, during the months ahead, years ahead, will give us constant victory in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Matthew chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 41. Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to his own disciples. There was an event, something taking place. He himself was praying. He himself was watching. He himself was getting ready for the climax of his coming to this world. And he knew that his disciples will remain after him to carry on the work, to carry on the ministry that he had started already. He had searched them. He had chosen them. He had selected them. He had separated them from the world. He was preparing them for the glory ahead. The disciples, on the other hand, were looking at the moment and at the day, the event of the day. And when he told them, watch, and pray. I was thinking of what was going to take place today and tomorrow in a few days' time. But the watching and the praying that Jesus referred to was for that time, for next week, for next month, till the end of their lives. Watch and pray eventually that to escape, overcome, conquer all the trials, tribulations, trouble, and temptation until you get to heaven. And the Lord is speaking to us today. We're not in the service for just an event of the moment. We're in the service so that the Lord will strengthen us and the Lord will equip us for the journey ahead so that on that final day, you would not have fizzled out. You will not have died by the wayside. You will not stop your journey halfway. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Watch and pray. Watch, open your eyes that you don't enter blindfolded into temptation 
if you are not watching, if you close your eyes while you are moving, while you are walking, and you fall into a pitfall, you may not get to the end. Open your eyes and see. Don't just look down. Don't just look up. Look in front of you. Look around you. Evaluate everything that comes your way and understand what's the purpose of that? What's the engine behind that noise? What's the personality behind that event? What's the person motivating, instigating this tempter, this temptress? Open your eyes and see. Don't just walk without your ears listening. Let your ears be opened. Let your mind be at alert. And let your whole personality wake up and understand everything depends on your action of the moment. Watch and pray. While you are watching, pray something beyond you that your natural strength cannot overcome. Something above you that your human energy cannot conquer. Something older than you are, someone older than you are, is trailing you and is looking for the weakest moment in your life. You cannot in your own strength, you cannot in your own power overcome him. While you're watching, that's making use of every faculty you have to see, to watch. You're praying. You are depending upon the Almighty God who has the power to help you and to sustain you. Don't only watch, watch and pray. Don't only pray, watch and pray. While you're watching and praying, that I might have this and have this and have that, something beyond that, that she enter not into temptation. He was talking to all his disciples, but everyone must take that instruction personally. Peter, you must watch personally. John, you must watch personally. James, you must watch personally. None can do it for the other. Each one must wake up. Each one must be active. Each one must be vigilant. Watch and pray individually that she enter not into temptation. The spirit, the spirit is unique to each individual. It's the spirit of the man. It's the heart of the man. It's the mind of the man. The spirit of the individual indeed is willing. Don't only pray, watch and pray. While you're watching and praying, that I might have this and have this and have that, something beyond that, that she enter not into temptation. He was talking to all his disciples, but everyone must take that instruction personally. Peter, you must watch personally. John, you must watch personally. James, you must watch personally. None can do it for the other. Each one must wake up. Each one must be active. Each one must be vigilant. Watch and pray individually that she enter not into temptation. The spirit, the spirit is unique to each individual. It's the spirit of the man. 
It's the heart of the man. It's the mind of the man. The spirit of the individual indeed is willing. I can tell Peter, I know you're willing. I can tell John, I know you're willing. I can tell James, I know you're willing. Each of my disciples, I can tell, I have chosen you out of the world. And I know you're willing. But I also know on the other hand, your, your strength cannot carry you. The flesh is weak. Isn't it unfortunate that the Lord can speak? Isn't it unfortunate that the one in you to be the personification of the truth can speak to them and yet anybody can brush that aside? No, I'm not weak. I'm willing and I'm strong. I'm willing and I'm able. Let it come, whatever. A maid, a man, let it come, whatever. A Pharisee, a Sadducee, let it come, whatever. Even Satan or demons, I will stand. Though all men forsake you, yet I will stand. Is it unfortunate that anyone can raise exalt, elevate a self-confidence above the Savior. That's what, what Simon Peter did. And he said, no, I don't need to watch. I don't need to pray. Any special prayer. I've always been ready. And I'm ready to go with you to the prison. And I'm ready to even die with you, please watch and pray. In First Corinthians chapter ten, I'm reading from verse twelve. First Corinthians chapter ten, I'm reading here from verse twelve. In verse twelve, wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Here is Paul the Apostle writing now by the Spirit to the Corinthians. Let him that thinketh he standeth as firm as me. He standeth as firm as an apostle. He standeth as firm as the one saint of God to speak to us to stand. Let him that thinketh he standeth having self-confidence, having a firm decision. Let him that thinketh he standeth, there is no problem, there is uh, no challenge that I cannot take. Let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. There has no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful always faithful church i said god is always faithful it was faithful to the whole nation of israel he'll be faithful to the old church of deep alive it was faithful to moses he'll be faithful to every minister here he was faithful to every individual believing the promise of god he'll be faithful to you today but god is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Ah, so you cannot say. You see, God moderates the temptation. He is not the cause of the temptation. As we all know, Satan is behind every temptation. But Satan is limited. That's why he told God about Job, you have fenced around him. You have made a hedge around him that I cannot go in. I cannot move in. If you remove the edge and you permit me to go in, I'll show you that the man is not serving you because he wants to serve. It's because of everything you have given him. But God is faithful. 
that he will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. If you don't open your eyes, how do you see the open door out of your dungeon? Out of the place of temptation. If you don't open the ears of your mind, how do you recollect the verse that will throw the door open and then you come out of that situation? If you are self-consumed and you are thinking only about yourself, and you're not thinking of the power of God and the promises of God, how will you see when he makes a way for you to escape? The people who fall into temptation, the people who don't open their eyes to see, they don't open their minds to receive the word that shows them the open door out of that temptation. They're concerned about other things. They're not concerned about the important thing, getting out of the temptation, becoming victorious, and on their way to life eternal. But it will make a way that you will be able to stand. And then it will moderate the temptation, the trial, the trouble, that you'll find a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. I will bear. I can bear. Whatever little thing that comes, the Lord has prepared all of heaven and he has prepared all of his sustaining grace for you that you will be able to bear it. But then verse 14, be a man of action, be a woman of action. There are times to stand, there are times to move, there are times to run, there are times to flee. Verse 14, wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. They're worshipping idols, they're showing it on the internet, they're showing it on the television. They are doing it by the wayside. They are worshipping idols. They are going on a procession on the street. Don't stand there. Don't gaze at them. Don't be watching them. How do they do this? These some believers, these idol worshippers, how do they worship their idols? Flee from idolatry. Don't even stay there. Don't even stand there. I am strong. What did you? How did you eat? Cannot affect me. Don't stay there. Flee from idolatry. You will flee. Look at First John. First John, chapter five. I'm reading from verse twenty-one. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from idols. Now, my child of God, I have the spirit within me and the spirit around me. I'm endued with power. I'm endowed with the gifts of the spirit. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. The Lord wants us to be victorious every time. And we're going to be victorious. Temptation will come, but you will overcome. Temptation is real, 